Last time we developed relationships for the two-layer refraction problem and uh, we left you with a couple questions. Uh, over here we see the um, general appearance of a shot record that includes uh, a reflection from basically three layers. We have uh, two reflecting layers and then the bottom layer, uh, of course, is kind of bottomless or the, uh, uh, the interface. Uh, at the base of, of that layers of no importance, importance to us in this problem. So we see a direct arrival. We see the reflection from the base of the upper layer, a reflection from the base of the second layer. And then we see two uh, critical refractions. And uh, we've got a critical refraction that um, runs out along the top of layer 2, the base of layer 1, and then we have a critical refraction that uh, uh, moves out along the base of layer 2, uh, top of layer 3. So a couple questions that we left you with is what is the critical distance, or x min, for the second refraction? That would be this distance here. And what is the relationship of the reflection from the base of layer 2, this reflection, to the critical refra refraction from the top of layer 2? That would be this event here. So we have this reflection event here in green. And then we have the critical refraction from the top of the layer, reflection from the base, critical uh, refraction along the top. And uh, what is that relationship? So uh, let's, uh, let's break it down. First of all, the question about what was the minimum distance or the critical distance for the refraction that runs out along the base of layer 2, top of layer 3. Uh, well, we know that up until a certain point, up until the point where the incidence angle is equal to um, the critical angle uh, between layers 2 and 3 this theta 2c, that will just get a reflection uh, back to geophones between the source and the receiver, no critical refraction. But once we get to this point where the angle of incidence for the ray traveling through uh, the second layer is equal to the critical angle, then we begin to get a critical refraction along the top of, um, uh, along the base of layer 2, top of layer 3. And if you remember, uh, that minimum distance is basically the x distance out to the point where you begin. You first begin to see the critical refraction. And we broke that down into the projection of the ray paths uh, traveling through uh, layer 1 and layer 2 onto the interface between those two media, between layers 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. And so we have these distances L1 and L2, and we know that um, the minimum distance is equal to 2 times L1 plus L2. So we'd have an L1 over here, we'd have an L2 over here, and that would, uh, 2 times L1 plus L2 would give us this x min. We also noted that uh, L is just the thickness of the layer uh, times the tangent of theta 1 would give us uh, L1, the uh, tangent of um, theta 1 being uh, L1 over H1, so we get uh, L1 that way, and uh, H2 similarly, or L2 similarly, H2 times the tangent of theta 2 critical. So this is what our x min is. And um, again, just emphasizing that uh, sometimes we call it x min 2, sometimes we call it uh, x, x crit 2, the critical distance for the second refraction, and uh, it's just going to be equal to 2 times L1 plus L2, this being L1, this L2. So in the two-layer resp response, you know, just to review what it is that we're seeing here, uh, again, this is the direct arrival, the reflection from the base of layer 1. Um, at long offsets, it basically moves at the same, um, uh, behaves almost uh, linearly and approaches the 
direct arrival. Uh, remember the direct arrival has a, um, a slow uh, point over V1. Uh, we have the reflection from the base of the layer. At some point we get a critical refraction. Uh, this would be the minimum distance here. So on, and then uh, likewise along the for the reflection along the base of layer 2 we get to a point where we get that critical refraction from the base of layer 2. And uh, so the ref reflection from the base of layer 1 converges on the direct arrival. And notice that the reflection from the base of layer 2, this R2, converges onto the refraction traveling along the top of the layer. So we see this reflection event uh, at the longer offsets here where it's uh, separated from the critical refraction. Uh, we see that it parallels the critical refraction from the base of layer 1. So, um, why is that? Let's think about that for a minute. Uh, here's the critical refraction uh, across the top of layer 2. It's moving out across this, uh, across this interface. And uh, with velocity v2, the velocity in this medium, the, medi the, the velocity of the second layer. And uh, it has this slope. We can kind of follow it down through here. We get to a point where the refraction from the base of layer 2 traveling with velocity v3 crosses over that uh, refraction. So as x gets larger and larger, the reflection from the base of layer 2 and the refraction across the top converge. And we can see that right here. This is the reflection from the base of layer 2 and the refraction from the top of layer 2. <coughs> And the reason for this is that, well, for short offsets, um, the, there, there, there's a significant difference between a reflection event uh, that would uh, uh, you know, travel down to this layer and come up to the uh, surface. So this path length and this path length are significantly different for relatively short offsets. So we're going to see a significant difference in the travel time because the reflection event spends more time traveling in uh, layer 2 than the critical refraction. So we'll see a, a nice separation there. We'll see that hyperbolic feature. However, as x gets very large, uh, the reflection event that's traveling through this second layer the difference in the path lengths between the critical refraction uh, shown in red here and the reflection event uh, shown in green is uh, relatively small. So source receiver offset gets larger and larger with respect to the layer thickness here. And the length of the reflection path approaches the length of the refraction path. Over here, these differences are relatively insignific insignificant. This would be fairly close to the critical angle. We get this uh, supercritical reflection here across the base of layer 2. So the basic, basic differences in path lengths are between this uh, path along the interface and this reflection path within layer 2. And we can see that as the offset gets larger and larger, these, these two they never quite make it. Uh, they're never quite the same length, but they get closer and closer together. So, so the time-distance relationship that we see over here makes uh, sense. We see the reflection from the base of layer 2. We expect that it will converge onto the refraction from the uh, top of layer 2 so that these events, um, they will not intersect. Uh, at infinity, you might say that they'd be equal. Uh, but for practical purposes, they basically parallel each other, that the reflection event from the base of layer 2 is asymptotic to the refraction from the top of layer 2. So uh, this is fairly easy to see. And we just, uh, you know, following this rationale, we expect the path length and the travel time for the reflection from the base of layer 2 to uh, be approximately equal to the travel time from of the refraction across the top with uh, increasing source receiver distance. 
So those two questions uh, are fairly straightforward. Uh, I did want to throw in here without without proof, basically, that, and you can go through this on your own, that we can generalize the critical refraction for an n-layer problem, the critical refraction from um, the base of layer n minus 1, will travel with the velocity of the underlying layer, v sub n. It will also be linear uh, with x. And the intercept it becomes a little bit more complicated. We have 2 over v sub n times the sum, and then we have these familiar looking uh, components in here. We have h sub i over v sub i. Remember we always had a v sub i, v sub n, a v, v1, v3, um, uh, v2, v3. And uh, over here we have the v sub n squared minus v sub i squared uh, term. So um, this is just equal to, again, a basically an equation for a straight line. We have 1 over v sub n times x plus an intercept. This is just a constant. And it's going to be different for each of the critical refractions. And, you know, usually we're only, uh, only interested in the first two or three for shallow seismic applications. And in the processing world for reflection seismic data, we'll talk about this later, a lot of times all you want to do is just get rid of the refraction data, although it's useful for determining the um, uh, static uh, uh, corrections. So, uh, but just more straight lines here. So the measurable data from the shot record uh, that we've been talking about, we've noted that we can get, uh, for the three-layer problem, that we can get the velocities V1, V2, and V3. We can get two reflection time intercepts, two refraction time intercepts. Uh, we can get the crossover distan distance, distances and uh, two critical distances. Uh, we, we, we really only usually work with this uh, crossover distance here between the critical refraction from the uh, uh, base of layer one and the direct arrival. Uh, and we get these two critical distances. So, so some questions to consider, you know, go back and take a look at the synthetic shot record that we've been discussing and using as an example of the two-layer problem. Go back and take a look at that. Uh, make sure that you can identify or understand how we can uh, come up with the three velocities, uh, the reflection time intercepts, the refraction time intercept, and so on. Uh, and then think about these uh, questions. Uh, questions to um, think about are how would you determine the thickness of layer 2, for example, from the reflection arrivals, from the refraction arrivals. And what variables can be measured directly from the shot record? Uh, uh, so we've already discussed those variables. And how would they allow you to determine H1 and H2? Remember, we're trying to use the shot record data to characterize the physical properties of the subsurface. We've already shown that it's fairly trivial to get the velocities. Uh, but we're also interested in the thicknesses of the layers. How many layers? What are their thicknesses? And uh, so on. So uh, once again, appreciate your tuning in. And uh, we'll uh, uh, continue our discussion next time. Thank you.